we got a little treat for you guys. Of course, you know Sister Jennifer. She came out of here, uh, here in the French Quarter in New Orleans. She was a dancer. Uh, you know the story. She uh, was involved in uh, satanic stuff. Boy, God delivered her, which is a good lesson for street preachers not to throw everybody into hell. There's still hope. And so what we're going to do is we're going to show you a little behind the scenes stuff from the French Quarter that only if you're in the inn, you know. You'll be surprised. Uh, you know, when you look at, uh, at, uh, at the French Quarter from a distance, like any city, it looks lovely, peaceful, nice horizon. But the closer you get to the streets, then you see the filth and the crime. We're going to give you a whole different side of the French Quarter, coming from somebody who grew up here and who knows a little intel. Enjoy. Here we are at a restaurant. Of course, when you're out sinning, you, you've got to eat. That's the concept. Well, this looks like a nice place to eat. Uh, I'm sure they probably got some secret sauce that you might be interested in. Here's a little behind the scenes of this restaurant here in the French Quarter. Sister? So, when I used to work in the French Quarter, we would order from here. And basically, you know, you order like takeout food, like hamburgers, whatever. But when you order whatever you're going to get, you know, like there's code words for other things. So for example, if I wanted some cocaine, I would just order um, a side of secret sauce or, you know, um, you could say like, give me a side of like scud missiles and you would have like some Xanax or you could order some dope on the side. You'd say, oh, I want some of that dog food rice. And then like, if you want a needle with your order, you can even order a needle and you say, oh, can you just bring me a pen? I need to write something down. And then they would put like the clean needle. Well, I mean, I guess it's clean, but you get a, a needle with your drugs delivered to you. Wow, what a bargain, huh? There's still some more stuff we're going to show you. So when you think we're too hardcore at the French Quarter, we don't know what we're talking about. This will hopefully give you a little bit of insight. Enjoy. COVID, is it, uh, is it a judgment of God or a cure? Hey, you decide. You can argue it amongst yourself. Here's the layout. Behind me is a bar, but once upon a time it was a strip joint. And of course you got somebody who came out of it. This isn't something we Googled or read. It's actually more secretive. But within this strip bar, the elect from the city, from police, city council, politicians, anybody that you know can't really hang around the bad places and want to hide, this is where they would come and get girls, have a secret room to fly into or get into, stairs to get into. And here's Jennifer who actually witnessed firsthand what went on inside this and how the girls cater to uh, the city elect. Yeah, so anyway, like the, um, when you're working there, you know that the police that are in the city, they need to be serviced. So basically, you know, they would come in and they would order a girl and then you would leave and then go upstairs in one of these rooms where they basically have, you know, a shower and a bed and, you know, a little bathroom to the side. And basically, you're going to do whatever, you know, they tell you to do because therefore, then they won't be coming in to raid the bar. Then, you know, all the drugs and all of the prostitution that normally goes on there day after day can happen without the police busting in because they're being serviced. So other than that, you know, like the uh, different politicians would come in and, you know, there's a different type of girl, different type of, her, you know, all different types of people that work there from the transgenders to the gays to the whatever, we all work there. And um, they would just come in, purchase you, and then you go upstairs and do whatever you want, or do whatever they want with you. And that happened there. That's a, that's a just up upstairs is the whole house, and then here too, and, and then you go in there, and upstairs is all the rooms. And then when you go up there with them, you know, all kinds of stuff goes on. You know, you think that these police people are the police to protect and serve. No, you go upstairs with them. They're doing drugs with you. They're wanting you to, to hit them and do some S&M weird stuff with them. They're, they're sick people in this world. Wow. So, you know, this is what goes on behind the scenes and uh, behind buildings. 
And I'm thankful all we get a chance to do is when we see it on Bourbon Street. We're not like God. God gets to see their heart and their mind. That would be extremely wicked. So it looks like just a nice little bar, residential area, office space. No. A sin is very deceitful. We've got more to show you. Hang in there. As most of you know Jennifer's testimony, there's a little bit of history of this bar behind us here on Bourbon Street. Sister? So this was the first place that I ever started uh, dancing at, at stripping. So I came here and I thought it was just going to be like a little innocent, you know, taking off your clothes or whatever, but sin against sin. And next thing you know, I was upstairs. Uh, prostituting, so it was like here at the bar, the strip club, and upstairs, same story as the other place, there's rooms that you could go to and have sex in, and um, I ended up getting pregnant with my daughter upstairs in one of those rooms. Wow. So there's a little bit of testimony uh, here on Bourbon Street. Now that she's saved, not only is she saved and believed in Jesus, but she's coming out here now and warning those uh, of the, uh, the potential sin you can go when you come to uh, Bourbon Street. You think you had a drinking problem? You come on Bourbon Street, you're going to leave with demons of more alcohol. You think you had a, a problem with pornography? You come to Bourbon Street, you're going you're gonna to really have in, a life filled with uh, a sin if you're not saved. And so uh, you come here like a regular tourist and you leave with demons. So uh, what a great testimony. We got more to show you down Bourbon Street. Come on, join us. You can't come to New Orleans without voodoo. And uh, here these people are probably going to get their love potions or whatever it is they're doing. You can see the streets empty, but at the voodoo shop they're standing in line to go inside. And uh, uh, welcome to New Orleans. This is Mardi Gras, people. This is Sunday of Mardi Gras. Look at how dead it is. This is a sodomite bar here. This bar used to always give us trouble and problems. And uh, we'd be fist fighting, they'd be breaking up our banners or messing up our horns. Look at this. It's empty. Is it a curse or a blessing, this virus? Let me tell you, I would wear three masks a day if we can shut it down like this. I'd even get the vaccine if we can shut it down like this. And so uh, as somebody who's been preaching here since 1981... I first heard about it in 1980, came out here in 81. <laughs> this is a blessing. You have no idea how much this is a blessing to me personally. Here's another place that we used to go. This is the Sodomite area. And, you know, I hate to break it to you, but it's at the very end, uh, the backside of Bourbon Street. That's when the Sodomite, it seems like the, the, the more sinful Bourbon Street is, it just uh, evolves into more and more and more. And after the bars, the nude dances, the live sex on stage, then at the end you have the sodomites. It's empty. This place used to be wall-to-wall -wall sodomites. Doesn't matter the weather, it was wall-to-wall -wall sodomites. Here's another bar here on the left. It's closed. These things are closed. Is it a, is it a judgment of God? And you might gripe because you have to wear a mask. I'll take this any day of the week. You know how many Christians have been praying to shut this down? It's closed. I've never seen anything like this. So praise God that uh, <laughs> it's shut down and I'm not, I'm not complaining and griping. But anyway, this is just a little drive through on uh, Bourbon Street and uh, what's happening uh, during the virus. I say uh, thank you, God, for shutting it down. What we've got is uh, a song you might have heard once or twice, maybe some of you older guys. I believe it's by the Eagles, uh, House of the Rising Sun, and it's, uh, it's in regards to uh, a house of prostitution. Well, this is it. This is it. Sin is only for a season. Sin looks very glamorous. But see how bad it is? 
it uh, it's uh, sin is is maybe uh, catches your attention it could be appealing you may sing the song over and over but uh, this is it right here behind me not very glamorous it's almost like people that come to Hollywood for the first time they can't believe man Hollywood's filthy it uh, it uh, it's the illusion of sin sister you want to add anything about this place much about it. I just know that you know at one point people it was a whorehouse and, and people from all over would come here and you know one of the many places in New Orleans or the the red the red light district or whatever but, uh, I don't do much in music I've never been music uh, you know happy dancing I'm never a guy like that unfortunately I couldn't even tell you who sang it all I know is because people know I come out to New Orleans they always ask me about uh, House of the Rising Sun. Well, there it is. Looks like more a house of an eclipse rather than a rising sun. There ain't nothing uh, righteous about it. Wicked, evil, and uh, perverted. Okay, as you know, uh, New Orleans is built on a swamp. And so uh, when the dead get buried, they don't put them underground. They actually put them above ground because uh, when it gets flooded, a hurricane or whatever, it would just pretty much remove the bodies from the earth and they'd be floating around. So uh, we're at a graveyard here, a regular cemetery. However, there is somebody here you might be interested in knowing who was buried or who started being tormented uh, now that they've been buried here. Sister, can you give us a little bit on that? So this is the grave site. It's in here and it's left during coronavirus of Marie Laveau, the voodoo queen. And so people come out here at um, all hours and they, they make a, shr a shrine to her at her grave. So they um, will mark her grave with little X's because they believe that if you put an X on her grave and pray to her that she'll answer their prayers. So people will come and put money on her grave and put the little X's and make their wishes for her to grant them put flowers and you know they do all kinds of stuff so they make it a shrine to her amazing amazing you think that jesus rose from the dead for your sins is odd people are leaving booze people are doing x's they have uh, they're praying to her and uh, because the virus is around the wrought iron has this uh, so protect the dead so they don't get the virus i mean they're in enough torment right now. They don't need uh, much more. But uh, we're going to show you a little bit around this, uh, this cemetery where people come and idolize the dead. The Bible says the dead know nothing. If they're in torment, all they know is torment. They don't know what their grandkids are doing. Uh, my grandmother doesn't know what I'm doing. My father doesn't know what I'm doing. The dead know nothing. Quite frankly, they could be in a whole different time zone than we down here. So uh, if you're praying to the dead, the Bible calls that necromancer, and that's an abomination. We don't pray to the dead, which is why Christians don't pray to the Virgin Mary. You don't find Jews praying to Noah. I don't find Jews uh, bowing down to Isaiah and asking him for counsel. But uh, uh, here in America, this is what our youth is doing. I've noticed a lot of people with black fingernail polish, sister. What, what's, what's the deal with that here? Just it's another thing that they do. It's just like that, that whole death. You know, it's like black. It's like the death look. Yeah. We're going to show you some of the walls because everything's locked in, and they don't necessarily allow uh, people to go in. Or who knows what they? Some of these wackos might, uh, you know, break it and, and try to get whatever bones they have of her. So th this one is locked up, but we're going to show you around the walls for those followers of hers who don't get inside. Now, what's going on here, Jennifer? Were they playing like tic-tac-toe or something? What happened here? So I guess since the cemetery is closed for coronavirus, instead of people praying to Jesus, Instead of people doing that, they come here and they make an X on the wall for Marie Laveau. They believe that if they put an X on her grave 
or in this case, since the, the virus has shut down the cemetery, they're doing it out here. They're putting the X's out here. So they're praying to her. They're making all kinds of wishes and requests. And they believe that the voodoo queen who's been dead is going to answer their prayers and honor their X's that they're putting all over. And somebody even left her a drink offering. Amazing. Amazing. Next time I come to New Orleans, not only am I going to bring my banner and bullhorn, I'm going to bring some chalk and Christianize this. Most of you remember Katrina, and you remember the Ninth Ward. This is a little bit of the Ninth Ward. We're going to take you down to where the dikes are, no pun intended, and how they busted. But uh, it's an interesting uh, inn that we have across the street from you. Sister, can you tell us a little bit about this place here in the Ninth Ward? Yeah, so this place right here, the Country Club, it's owned by Sodomites. And basically what it is, it's a nudist colony. So it's a restaurant and they do have a swimming pool and a hot tub and a place where you could play pool. But the requirement is when you go in, you have to lose your clothes. Wow. So it's, you, it's a nudist colony. How do you leave a tip? I mean, what do you what do you do with something like that? Well, everybody knows not to go in the pool, if you know what I mean. That's amazing. <laughs> so looks just like a regular restaurant, uh, a place to go there and uh, enjoy yourself. Uh, let me tell you, in New Orleans, you better know what building you're walking into. Uh, requirements are normally, in most businesses, shirt and shoes required. Here, they don't want it. it it's not required. So uh, we're going to go to a, a little bit of, of uh, the Ninth Ward to show you why maybe God got angry at this place. Of course, CNN and Network News aren't going to tell you some of this stuff. But uh, uh, come on in. Enjoy the, uh, the view. Here we are in the Ninth Ward. And again, uh, you want to know why the Katrina came? A lot of Biden, rainbow flags. And this alleyway has a, has a little bit of a, a history behind it, sister. So when I was doing voodoo, we used to come out here and we this is where we would do our rituals. Like people would kill the chickens and we would have like the black mass or, you know, just doing the spells, conjuring up demons, letting demons possess our body and uh, just basically channeling demons and it would all be done right here. Looks like just a little pathway, a little, a little alleyway. Sinful, wicked. And you wonder why God sent a Katrina. So I uh, hope you're enjoying this. We're going to stop over and take a look at the dikes and see what it looks like even years after, whether it's been rebuilt or not. Thank you for joining us. Come on, keep coming. Here we are at ground zero of Katrina. This is the ninth ward, and you're going to see the levee. You're going to see uh, what happened. It's still, uh, it's still not uh, up to par. It's still uh, in bad shape. But this is where the levee broke and uh, water was just uh, uh, beyond the roof. Uh, bodies were floating. Uh, boats and cars were on top of trees. So uh, it's amazing what God does when, when God does get involved. And so uh, this is uh, why we go out and we preach. When my God gets involved, judgment does happen. I'm going to end with this kind of odd story and then we're going to hear a little bit from uh, Sister Jennifer on living here when it hits. Uh, during the time Katrina hit, uh, uh, HBO was doing a documentary on me and they were following me around and they came to Mardi Gras, the Mardi Gras after Katrina. And we came here to the Ninth Ward and I'm standing on top of houses giving a testimony of what happens when the God of the Bible gets involved. Not only can he destroy an individual, he can destroy an entire city, let alone a whole country. And this was evidence of the God of the Bible. And uh, uh, after the interview, one of the brothers that was here, uh, who does give out Gideon's Bible, started noticing in all the debris, this little piece of paper that was flapping. And uh, I, there was about maybe seven, eight street preachers with me. 
plus the film crew and the producer and director. I mean, this is an HBO event, so there was a lot of bodies. Brother Doug picks up this piece of paper, and it's a Bible verse. I'm going to share it with you. This is what was flapping uh, after after we did the HBO um, interview. It's it's Deut uh, Deuteronomy 33 6. It says, "Let Reuben live and not die, and let not his men be few." That was the Bible verse. It's amazing out of all of the all of the trash and homes that were destroyed to find that little Bible verse flipping. And uh, I know the guys from HBO thought, "Did you guys plant that?" Uh, no, you can't make this stuff up. It's amazing. Christianity should not only be a Sunday thing. It's you're going to see the hand of God on many levels. And on that one, uh, it was quite moving to find that verse after an interview talking about the judgment of God. And I don't apologize for my God. Sister, you live here during the time. Can you tell us what happened? got out and the next day like my grandmother we found out like the water was over her roof everything in her house was destroyed and um it was it was crazy it was it was really bad you know uh, uh what most people don't tell you is that the eve of katrina was an event called southern decadence it's like the mardi gras for homosexuals and unfortunately they don't tell you that unfortunately what you don't hear in the news are the people that made the massive exodus out of New Orleans and went to say uh, Houston, other other cities in Texas, the crime rate in those cities went up. Okay, you're talking uh, a very sinful people that hate, kill each other, uh, drink in all sin, uh, not just homosexuality. And God had enough and actually put a stop. And you can tell it's still not rebuilt. I believe the mayor should leave a section of the city. Uh, where um, where homes are still destroyed as a reminder don't mess with the God of the Bible so uh, uh, we just encourage you for your prayers as you can see they're rebuilding uh, the ninth ward but it's still not a hundred percent and it may never be uh, as a testimony uh, to I believe uh, don't mess with God don't anger the God of the Bible he can destroy your city and that's why he sends us so he doesn't destroy your city. Quite frankly, you don't want my God to get involved. You don't want my God to show himself. Because when he does, things happen. Which is why he sends people like us to warn people on the streets to get right with him or he does this. God bless you. Thank you for your time. And uh, we hope this is a little education on what happens behind the scenes here in New Orleans because most of the p uh, videos are us preaching. But this is, this is the reason why we go out and preach. God bless you.